inner tire rods. Inner tire rods ends, all that kind of stuff. CV joint, boots, U joints, exhaust, shocks, and struts. Okay. So we do inner tire rod ends first, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Okay. Um, we're going to lift this, double check the hoist, and if it's good, then we're going to lift up this weight. I'm going to show you the quick and dirty way to do it, but it's not the best way. And I'm going to show you the best way. Probably the best way is you have to get on the floor to do it. Okay. So I'm going to lift this up, check the hoist on it. We've got a hoist set up under here. What about on that side? Okay, I'm going to go up, watch fingers. All right, double check the hoist, make sure it's good. All right, we're good on both sides? Good. Good? Yeah. Okay, so now Let's do a little bit of lesson as far as steering and suspension components. Thank you. If you can see, if, if I can't see you, I know you can't see what I'm doing. You need to move. This is, a, this is what they call a parallelogram system. All of this, inner and outer tie rod end, stay parallel to what they call the center link of the drying line. Outer tie rod end, adjusting sleeve, inner tie rod end. Inner tie rod end, adjusting sleeve, outer tie rod end. Are you okay now? This part here, this is called an idler arm. It basically holds the side of it up and it provides a little bit of resistance so the thing just doesn't steer back and forth easily. This one here is the pitman arm, it comes from the steering box. So. Now, what this is supposed to do, which is perfectly normal, it's supposed to do that. These are balls and sockets. And you know, you think about it when you steer, you are, you know, terrain and bumps and dips and things like that. This stuff has to be kind of flex and move around like that. That's fine. What it's not supposed to do is compress. So what you do, the quick way to do this, to check this. Now this one here, the fact that it's missing a boot, that's an automatic needs to be replaced. Because it's got dirt and grime and water in there. Now it's junk, I can guarantee it. If it was in the real, it was in the real world. Uh, the fact that it's in the auto shop, it might not be junk yet. It's probably heading that way. So take this, two-handed, see a little bit of movement? Less than a sixteenth of an inch is okay. If it's a sixteenth of an inch or more, no bueno. It's got to be replaced. You just walk down and you do all of those. Inners, the outers. And you'll know when you're bad. We had all my second year kids bring their stuff in that they drive every day. So they're like, oh my God, it's bad, like really bad. See that one? You can even hear it, All right? That's not good. The reason that these are so bad and the fact that, you know, we hardly, we don't really drive this truck. Look at how bad that one is. I would consider replacing that. Okay. The reason these are so bad is that this thing has been apart so many times that we put a lot of pressure on that ball and socket to force it apart. And that's why we've kind of worn them out. Um, as far as the the the, uh, the pivot arm, do the same thing there. Try to compress that one. Nothing there. Try to compress this one at the idler arm. Nothing there. Now the other way to check the idler arm is you grab the idler arm and you try to move it up and down. See how I can move this thing up and down? See how much movement there is in there? That's starting to wear out. When that moves a lot, it's junk. Okay, everything sags. There's no resistance and steering. Tends to wander and weave all the time. That's because that's gone. That's failed. Okay. Um, shock absorbers, the quick thing on shock absorbers is to check and make sure they're not leaking. A lot of these things are oiled shard shocks and the shock absorbers right here, and you can see that it's wet with oil. That's probably mean that shock is bad or it's going bad. Same thing on this side, this one looks nice and dry, nothing there. Same thing in the back, we've got two shock absorbers back here.
nothing there, nice and dry. We'll bounce test it anyway. Um, okay, now the other thing while we're under here, how to check exhaust. Take the channel locks. Your exhaust system is rust out from the inside out, not the outside in. It's constantly full of water. Take the channel locks, one hand, squeeze it. If it goes and it crushes, it's bad. Okay, it's pretty simple. Or if it's got a hole in it, it's good. They tend to be very good towards the front. As you get closer to the back, they go bad. Big catalog converter here. Nothing there, we're fine. Go all the way the length of the exhaust. Everywhere there's a tube. Fine. All the way out to the end of the tailpipe. And that's fine. That's how you check exhaust. See how long it takes? Literally a minute. Okay? So, um, U joints. This thing's got universal joints. I'm going to do it while we're here. And then we'll lift this thing up and I'll show you CV dry shaft. We'll do it on the Honda because that's already up. Um, U joints. So come on back in here. That's a universal joint. Sometimes called a Carden universal joint. That's universal joint there. That's universal joint there. The first thing you're gonna do, when you look over here, you're gonna look for this really light brown rusty dust. And if you see that, that's a tall tail sign that this U-joint is basically taking the little tiny little needle bearings in there and it's pulverized them and turned them to dust. The other thing, hold, is that when you go this way, all the way in one direction, when you go back, this and this should always move the same amount. You go this way and you go back and then this moves more than this and it goes clunk that means that u-joint's bad okay so that's like and usually when you put the thing in gear or reverse or park it go clunk put it back in in the other direction like drive clunk and then you start looking under here don't crawl under here with it while oh, you're trying now you'll get run over i see nothing there you're basically looking for movement between here one will stay another will start to continue to move do the same thing in the back Look for dust, look for the magic dust. This brown in color, nothing there. Light, hold, I can't do three things at once. And see, this got a little bit of play in her axle, so that's normal. So that's normally what we expect to see. But this thing stays the same, it doesn't move more on one side than the other. Okay, it stays in place. Question about that. Okay, very little light, I need that. Let's go over to the Honda, let's look at that real quick. This is the perfect example here. Come on over here so you can see what I'm looking at here. This right here, I think I'm moving around right there. That's a CV joint shaft, constant velocity joint. It's not like a regular U joint, it's got a lot more parts in it. And they call it a constant velocity joint because no matter what angle, what angle you turn up and down, it stays at the same velocity. U joints don't. They accelerate and deaccelerate. That's why they vibrate after a while when you really kind of jack the truck up in a real, they're, they're really weird angles. They vibrate. That's why. What I want you to do for this is when this thing's all together, you're going to grab the shaft and you're going to try to move it in and out. It might, it might just go clunk a little bit. If it moves a lot, that means that one of these joints is all worn out. Probably this one. The other thing you're always going to look for is these rubber boots. It's a nice rubber soft accordion boot. If there's a slice in it and grease is coming out, it needs to be replaced. The boot, at minimum, and maybe even the whole shaft. Depends how long the grease has been coming out of it. It looks like a snotty green grease. It's nasty looking. Same thing here, we got a boot here. Inspect that, just make sure there's no tears. It makes, and you can tell when the grease is coming out, it'll cover everything. And you know it's time to replace it. Okay. Um, and this has got blue grease on it because I've had this together and apart again today. More than once. Because it's my hobby right now. Okay. Go back over here, show you check one of them. So, here, let's go back up with this thing. We'll pull away with this. Push arrow up. Arrow will go up. Hit, hit mode twice. Twice. Okay, now it'll go up. We did it three times. Twice will work. Okay, so then here, all you gotta do is grab the CV joint shaft and then try to move it in and out. If it doesn't move in and out, it's fine. You'll know when it's bad because it'll move in and out like an eighth of an inch at least. 
and it'll clunk, 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 clunk. And then when you steer sharp, it'll click. When you steer a real sharp turn, it'll click, 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 click. And then when the car straightens out, the clicking goes away. That's the balls and sockets and stuff, and they're trying to pop out a joint. That's why they, that's why they click. Okay, that's usually from somebody like doing big burnouts with it and donuts and stuff like that, and they ruin all that stuff. And they're like, I don't know how that happened. You're like, I'll listen with your parents, and we really know what happened. Okay. All right. Um, I do shocks and struts with you. This is your paper. I think I did everything. Oh, I got to show you the other test. We did inner and outer tie right ends. Oh, so here, back over here. Um, one of these benches has an inner tie right end. So here's our outer tie right end on this. This is a rack and pinion steering. It only has the inner and outer tie right ends in the rack. There's our, our outer, and it's nice and stiff in here. I know that's probably okay. And then we got this big accordion boot up here, which is hard, kind of hard plastic. So it's a little harder to check that. But here's one that's bad. This came out of like an Escort or Tempo or Topaz or something. And it's just a ball and socket there. And I'm gonna pass this around. And I want you to feel just the little bit that's, that's worn out here. You can just barely move this in and out. And what'll happen is you apply the brakes and it'll cause the tires to shake. It'll cause the tires to quiver. And they say, well, that's a brake issue. And they'll put you know rotors on it and pads on it, put all the other, they're spending two, three hundred dollars on parts, and it still does it. It's this. Because the thing just starts starts shaking. Okay. So the trick is you gotta replace these. So what I always do, if the if the boot is hard, you either can try to shove your thumb in it and try to find this area right here and put your thumb there, and then have somebody just move the wheel and tire at like three and nine and try to move it back and forth and see if you can feel any movement in there. Okay. You can also do it being on the ground. Just kind of shove your hand up in there. Just be real careful that the person only rocking the wheel and not cranking the wheel and pinch your arm in there. Okay. So questions about that? I'll pass this around. And this was, I think it's off one of my cars. It was a total tempo, I think. Um, all right. I did that. Okay. Gray S10. Go in there next. And then I think I'm kind of, oh, we'll challenge test that too. That's what else we're doing. And you got to grab my piece of cardboard. Great. Start it. Listen to me. Look at me. You're gonna get in. You're gonna turn the key to the wrong position. 
you're just gonna rock your wheel about that much. Slowly, but don't stop until I tell you. Okay? Yeah. You're gonna have to get a body like that, just the wheel. <laughs> so you don't need no, the wall. No, I think he does so it. He might mess it up. Sing a song. Not that yet. <laughs> Okay, so now I will put this hose away just so that is he in the car yet? Yeah. Yep. Alright. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna literally just wrap your hand around like the steering knuckle in the outer tie rod end. The fact that the weight is on this vehicle and you're putting all of that pressure on those front end parts, if there's any wear at all in them, it's gonna show up when you put your hand around it. And you literally just walk down all the front end parts and you put your hand around them as they're, as they're going back and forth with the wheel. You know, the other one's a little quicker and easier because you're standing up and you just squeeze everything out of the pliers. This is more accurate, this is better. And I'm gonna cut a couple, cut a couple of pieces of cardboard from upstairs so the kind of one on each side so if you're gonna lay on a piece of cardboard, you can do that. You get pre prepared one here. All right, go ahead. So I'm literally, I just got my hand around it and I'm feeling the movement in it. So I want to feel like there, and there. I'm on the idler arm now, and there. Now see, I feel movement in this inner tie right on the driver's side, definitely, okay? Come in, it feels good. So of all of them, only the inner tie right on the driver's side is the only one that's kind of bad. Okay, you can stop. All right. Next thing. So, you can get out. So, if you are careful, don't dent my car. Pull up a better charger. Okay, so next thing is, last thing, shocks and struts. Shocks and struts all kind of same thing, all kind of do the same job. I'm gonna push down on three times, just like a sine wave. Back down on the jounce, and it should come back on the rebound, and it should settle. It should not continue. If it does, it's junk. Okay? Push down three times. See, it kind of came back on, kind of settled. Okay? Go all the way around the car like that. Goes a little bit too much, doesn't it? Okay? Go to the back, do the same thing in the back. Truck. You get something like a three quarter one time truck, you push anything all day long, you're not gonna feel it. You're just gonna be able to compress it. That you're gonna have to drive. Put in some big swells and things like that. And if it just kind of continues to just kind of float and ride, they're bad, obviously. Okay. Questions? I think I covered it all, didn't I? Struts are done the same way for checking on, checking for oil leakage, and then bounce testing. Make sure you bounce, push it on somewhere that you're not gonna buckle the car. Okay? Good. You had your groups, go to the hoist. Do not push the brake pedal on the Honda, okay? You can do the other hoist and grab a test sheet, grab your group, get started.